Okay, good morning, brothers and sisters. We're back for uh, the finish up on 2nd Ezra chapters 6 to 10, and they're extensive. So I'm going to have to be reading pretty fast to get through them. I apologize for the light. It's early morning here, and it's shining through my, my window here, and I don't have a blind. I just have curtains, and it's still very bright, so I apologize for that. So we'll just jump right into it and try to get through these, and I'll read some of the comments and try to connect it to my thoughts. That um, I was thinking as I was reading it, if anybody is interested. So this is Second Ezra uh, in the Apocrypha, and we're going to start at chapter six. And in the last video we finished in chapter five. So, and I am changing gender around here. Um, to get the correct rendering in some instances. And she said to me at the beginning of the circle of the earth, before the portals of the world were in place and before the assembled winds blew, and before the rumblings of thunder sounded, and before the flashes of lightning shone, and before the foundations of paradise were laid, and before the beautiful flowers were seen, and before the powers of movement were established and before the innumerable host of angels were gathered together. And before the heights of the air were lifted up and before the measures of the firmament were named and before the footstool of Zion was established. We get the footstool uh, in Lamentations. I believe it's chapter 2. I'm not sure, but it's in Lamentations. We get the footstool. And before the present years were reckoned and before the imaginations of those who now sin were estranged. And before those who stored up treasures of faith were sealed. Then I planned these things, and they were made through me and not through another. Just as the end shall come through me and not through another. Who's that? Daughter Zion. Yeah, the life giver of this world. And I answered and said, what will be the dividing of the times? Or when will be the end of the first age and the beginning of the age that follows? And she said to me, from Abraham to Isaac, because from him were born Jacob and Esau. Yep, because men birth, women don't. You notice they hold back all the feminine here. Because it actually is the divine feminine speaking. That's what they won't tell you about it. Um, from Israel, uh, they got Jacob, but from Israel's hand held Adam's heel from the beginning, right? Uh, so it was Jacob and Esau in the womb. But I'm going to tell you it was Israel and Adam. Adam and Israel in the womb is what I'm going to tell you. And Jacob is Israel. We know he took her birthright from her. Esau, if you go study the name Esau, it means red. It's going to link you right back to Adam. So here we're actually being told something about the age and how the ages end and begin. So it has to do with the allegory of Jacob who took hold of Esau's heel in the womb of his mother. So instead of Esau, I'll place Adam. We're going to see how this renders out when I do that. And Jacob, I'll put Israel. And nobody wants to put a female in the womb. It was two males in the womb. Because the womb never bears a daughter as a firstborn. Ever, ever, ever. Right, no, they just exalt the firstborn male um, and totally ignores the firstborn females. Uh, well, that don't mean nothing to God. I don't know why God would even bother opening the womb uh, the, for the first time with a female if all that ever mattered to God was firstborn son. Every time the womb was opened, it should have been born a uh, firstborn son. That's how it should go if that's all that matters to God in my understanding. But this is all lies, right? And none of it makes sense. And it's not designed to make sense. That's why God says, reason it out. So, for Adam is the end of this age. And for Israel, and this would be the right rendering, is the beginning of the age that follows. So, we're looking at a time change here. When Adam will no longer be exalted, and we link the name Adam to Satan, uh, the accuser in the garden. So he, his time will come down. He will fall. The established man-made law, man-made religion will fall. And Israel will be established as the world's um, leader in all things. 
And when we say Israel, we're talking about the daughters of Zion that were cast out amongst the fields of the Gentiles. That's what we're talking about. So for the beginning of a woman, if we look at it, Israel, Jacob, Israel, being female, and we know it is from all our studies, for the beginning of a woman is her hand, right? She leads. That's the beginning when she begins to start to lead them in the paths that they have not known, identified as the right hand, which will protect mankind from death. So for the beginning of a woman is her hand, right? And she leads in gentleness and in love. And then she'll have to bring out the rod if they don't listen. Now, she don't like to do that, but she will. She promises it. Proverbs, wisdom promised it in Proverbs when they, when they ignored her calling and her law. And the end of a man is his heel. Well, what does a heel typically do? Well, it can walk, but in this case it crushed, right? It, it smashed. So between the heel and the hand, seek for nothing else, Ezra. So she's saying to Ezra, once you begin to understand this allegory, then you'll understand all of it. So um, we also get the uh, ten toes that are smashed by that stone that is cut out without hands in Daniel 2, identified as the capstone in Zechariah 4, which is these daughters gathered back. And capstone in Zechariah 4 is head, and it's feminine, which links you to the head. Uh, Christ, it says Christ is your head. Kephale is head, and Kephale is feminine, and it's feminine for a reason. It's representing the Holy Spirit. And I answered and said, O sovereign Lord, if I, had, if I have found favor in thy sight, show thy servant the end of thy signs, which thou didst show me in part on a previous night. So I'm talking this way because of my teeth. So uh, she answered and said to me, rise to your feet and you will hear a full resounding voice. And if the place where you are standing is greatly shaken while the voice is speaking, do not be terrified. Because the word concerns the end and the foundations of the earth will understand. So the true foundations of the earth were identified as these daughters of Zion. They are the foundation. And we know that those foxes and the word for for the understanding of what a fox is, he's a burrower, so he dug out the true, the truth. And he tried to pack in the lies. That's the daubing of the wall, right? And uh, so it says, Adam daubed his wall. He daubed it over, the lie in his heart. He daubs it up. And uh, that's akin to hiding the harlot spirit in his heart, which you find her in Isaiah 47, which is Babylon saying, no one sees me. I will never be widowless. I will never be childless. And the akin to no one sees me, I'm hid in his heart. That's why no one sees, him, sees her. So that the speech concerning them, all right, they will tremble and be shaken, for they know that their end must be changed. So we know change is coming, and it's going to be a hard change. It's not going to be an easy change. People, Christians especially, just don't want to reason the text out, which we're told, reason with the Spirit. You don't listen to men on pulpit. You don't go read the commentary. You reason with the Holy Spirit. That's what we're told to do. And to reason out something, it means that it must come back making some kind of sense. Well, a he, 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 and there's a male and a female made in the image of God, and she births, and he births life. Yeah. Does that reason out in your tiny little brains? God must really think we have pea-sized brains because we're not reasoning it out. We're just listening with blind faith. Your eyes are closed. And that's why you're led into a ditch, which I said on, in my commentary under my last video that we were going to take a look at maybe in this one. So when I heard this, I rose to my feet and listened, and behold, a voice was speaking, and it sound was like the sound of many waters. And it said, Behold, the days are coming, and it shall be that when I draw near to visit the inhabitants of earth. So the days are coming, right, when I shall draw near to visit the inhabitants of earth. Now, we discussed this on some of our other videos, how that is akin to an inbound system. And you can identify that in the scriptures, because a large planetary system in our system with its gravitational pull, affects Earth. 
from our simple understanding of our gravity and another planet's gravity, and from what we've been told anyway, from science and whatnot, that that's how it affects. When a huge uh, planet is near Earth, it'll have effects on our volcanoes and our earthquakes. Well, she's saying, before that, um, she says, they will tremble and be shaken, for they know that their end must be changed. When I heard this, I rose to my feet and listened, and behold, a voice was speaking, and its sound was like the sound of many waters. So is that what it's going to sound like when, when a large planetary body actually comes near enough to us to really, really be aware of it? Is it going to... Is it going to have a sound that we're, we're unaware of, that we're being told about here? It, it, it's a voice, it's gonna, it was a voice speaking, and it's going to sound like the sound of many waters. Well, I, I don't know. I'm just speculating. But then it says, and it said, this voice said, Behold, the days are coming, and it shall be that when I draw near to visit the inhabitants of the earth, and when I require from the doers of iniquity, the penalty of their iniquity, and when the humiliation of Zion is completed, it says, let her eyes look upon Zion, let her be defiled. Defiled means to become black. To become black or soiled is your understanding in Revelations 14.4, which is what they did to the Shulamite. So she would teach an empty doctrine. That's what black means. To become black in the spirit means to be teaching an empty theology that can't deliver the children. So she says, my own vineyard I have not kept. So, and when the humiliation of Zion is complete. So you get that in Micah chapter 4, verse 11, where it says, let our eyes look upon Zion. Let her be defiled. Let's make her our harlot. Let's make her black so she'll teach our religious lies. And so we, we see when she's coming in to the vicinity of earth, this planetary body, and when I require from the doers of iniquity the penalty of their iniquity, and when the humiliation of Zion is completed, and when the seal is placed upon the age. So all these signs that we're being given of the shaking, of the trembling of earth, uh, the volcanic eruptions, we're going to look at that just in a minute, are all signs of the ending placed upon the age, that the age is ending. Right, So when the seal is placed upon the age, which is about to pass away, then I will show these signs. The book shall be opened before the firmament, and all shall see it together. So when that, I believe this is what it's telling us from all the signs that God has shown us in the scriptures, both canon and non-canon, that what it means when the heavens scroll back and we see the throne of God, we're going to see that planet enter our system. And it's a huge planetary body and with it comes all of these awakenings of earth the shaking of the foundations that they know that they must be changed so we know it's a hard time and the last time that the presence of God was with us was also akin to all of these signs now for those who ain't seen my other videos where I spoke on this we're going to speak on it because you find these signs all identified for you when the presence of God was with us, the only God that earth has ever known able to create these signs, according to the Bible, you find in Isaiah 64. So, what does it say? Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. So, we're looking at the presence of God. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causes the waters to boil. What does that sound like? Well, it sounds exactly like a volcanic eruption, does it not? Sure it does. And that's why they linked the exodus of the Israelites during their stay in Egypt when they were exiting it to a volcanic eruption that went off and caused these plagues upon Egypt. And it does so line up. It does. And it lines up with this scripture right here, which basically tells you that that's exactly what it was. So, as when the melting fire burneth, um, it causes the water to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries. So, she comes into our system for judgment. She scrolls back the heavens. That's akin to her pulling uh, the dark covering away from all the nations of the earth. 
And I also think it's linked to when men's hearts will be failing them, women's hearts will be failing them. Great fear is going to come upon us because of the great lie and the great dark covering that we've been under being told, well, no, we're the only ones in the system, especially Christians, is going to be shocked. But yet this appears to be the throne showing up to scroll back. And that throne is also likened to the Ancient of Days. All right. Um, so it says, um, to make thy name known to thine adversaries that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things, which we look not for, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. What mountains? Well, these are, again, our volcanic eruptions is what we're looking at. For since the beginning of the world, you see, beginning of the world, not since Christ, it says, from sin, for since the beginning of the world, men, people, women, have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what she hath prepared for those that waited for her. So nothing has compared to this since the very beginning right, since the presence was actually here on earth, identified as the daughters of Zion, her personal inheritance, which man cast down and said, eh, we don't want him in covenant. Well, her arrival appears to be quite imminent. So, thou meetest her that rejoices and worketh righteousness, those that remember, there's that word remember, I was drawn to that word remember because it took me sort of to my name, it was Greek 3415, and it has the idea of remembering, so um, those that remember thee in thy ways, behold thou art wroth, for we have sinned, and those is continuance, and we shall be saved, so did I read that wrong, behold thou art wroth, for we have sinned, in those is continuance, and we shall be saved. In those what? In those laws of wisdom is continuance. If we don't turn the system around to reflect wisdom's laws, which were first found in those Ten Commandments that Christ was shown walking. He walked them, yes. We're saying Christ did not die upholding Old Testament law, because if he had, that would have made him in covenant with the harlot spirit. He died exalting the key of David, her laws, which is found in part in those Ten Commandments. Now, we also sh were also shown what her law consisted of in Isaiah 58 and in part in Ezekiel, what is it, 18? In part, what some of our laws that gov should be governing this world and are and uh, the government of God, identified as the key of David upon his shoulder, the government will be placed upon his shoulder. That's how Adam was to rule. This Adam, the first Adam, didn't want her. He cast her off, said, we don't want her laws. So, but it's in the continuance of her laws, wisdom's laws. So she says, when I called, you didn't answer. So then it takes you to the rod. She says, then I'm coming with a rod. I'll bring a rod. And I'll cut away those who don't belong to me. If you don't want to listen and turn things around. And she, she speaks that. I believe in it's uh, Psalm 7. She says, if he doesn't listen, if he doesn't turn from his wicked ways, then I'm going to string my bow. That's my covenant, my daughters. If he doesn't willingly turn from his wicked ways and begin to change his laws upon this earth, that we just discussed in the last video how it's an unjust law, it's weighted to favor those they choose to favor and to yoke others under that law. If they don't turn from their wicked ways, she says, I'm going to restring my covenant. And you're not going to like the results of it. Because when I called, you didn't turn from your wicked ways. You didn't respond to my laws. And now I have to send a rod of iron. And she says that in Psalm 2. And she says, I'm going to have you in derision. I'm going to mock you, and I'm going to laugh at you just like you laughed at my daughters I gave you in covenant. And you defiled them. You made them black. Let our eyes look upon Zion. Let her be defiled. 
But she says, shameful spewing is going to come upon your foreskin, and I'm going to cut you away. That's what I'm going to do for not heeding my laws. So, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. Look at that. We fade as a leaf. We're told that the leaves are gave to us for the healing of the nations. Yeah. So here we're fade, we're faded as a leaf. There is no healing for the nations. We're all as an unclean thing. We're all living under an unjust law, an unfair law, and we're all upholding it. And Christ says, why do you live as if you are subject to the elemental principles of this world? I gave you liberty and freedom. That's what my death did, and it wasn't the blood that did that. It was the law that he as the second Adam upheld. Now, they spilled from that a big old fat law that you're washed in blood. You're condemned in it. That was not part of God's law. She says, I ask no sacrifice of you. I ask no blood. And Christ walked that clean law of daughter Zion. There was no blood in it. But the Pharisee says, he's not walking man's law, our Torah. We better crucify him. And out of that, they said, we'll flip it into a new, brand new religion. And they'll walk it. And then you see them taking captive these daughters who are burdened down with sin because this teaches that you women, you women, aren't to be trusted and you are more wicked for what you did. That's the accuser, accusing her. Christ didn't accuse. He upheld her. He loved her. You get it? So those are the continuance that will save us, right? Not the Torah. They want to teach Torah as coming from God. Torah did not come from God. That is the man-made religious lies and laws. We've proven it. The covenant that came from God was found in those Ten Commandments that Christ walked and showed you. And they did not love their God. Their God was the daughters of Israel. The sons of God were also called the sons of Zion for anybody who does their study. So... Where as faded leaves and our iniquities are like the wind, are like empty doctrines. Our iniquities, our sins, have come and were shaped under the law. That's what it says. Iniquity is shaped by the law. What law? Well, certainly not the one Christ walked. And he didn't walk the Torah. Sorry. Wrong. You got the story all wrong. Um, so, <coughs> so our iniquities are like empty doctrines that bring on sin. They have taken us away, and they have. Nobody walks with their eyes opened anymore to actually study through the Spirit. They're too busy listening to a made-up lie. And there is none that calleth upon thy name. Nope, they don't even know her. She don't exist. She's not the life giver. It's father and his children. There's never a mother mentioned, ever. That would make God a liar. Since woman is the example as the life giver and the Spirit upon the earth. That's her example. When you get studying it in Malachi 2 states, you dealt treacherously with the wife of your youth in your covenant. And she was the spirit, basically is what it comes down to when you reason the text out. She was the spirit of your covenant and you dealt treacherously with her. And you took unto you a harlot wife. That's what you took unto yourself that would build you up. That's what you did. Um... So, and there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth themselves up to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us. Who don't we know about? Mother. It wasn't father that hid his face. We all know about father. We all know about the son. They didn't hide their face. Who hid her face? Who's the one you don't know about? To hide means you don't see. That's what it means. So it says, I have hid my face from them. Right? And the reason why she hid her face because nobody called for her and none of her daughters called for justice in the world. They began to walk in a lying theology. And under that theology, the false light of Lucifer shines and makes us black in the spirit. That's what it does. Um, and has consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, thou art our mother, not our father. We are the clay, 
and thou art our potter. You told the potter, Isaiah 29, that she had no power over the clay. Oh, it's a man he shapes with his hand. Oh, really? Reason that one out. How many men here shapes in your womb with his hand? Uh, no, it's her womb that creates the clay and forms it and shapes it. And that's the word that they don't want you to know, number 70, Hebrew. And it means the birthing chair for the potter there. Yeah. And you told her that she had no power over the clay. It's father. Father and his children. Really? Most on earth, I see it's mother and the children. It's not father and the children. And they are supposed to be her vineyard, according to what the Shulamite states. But my own vineyard have I not kept. They're not hearkening to the spirit of my covenant. Because I'm too busy teaching his religious lies to them for him. So, um, be not wroth, very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are thy people. Thy holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem is a desolation. Our holy and our beautiful house, where our mothers praise thee, is burned up with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste. And the spirit is desolate. It is a desolate spirit because the daughters of Zion, the daughters of Israel, actually got cast out into the lands of the Gentile. They are not in the land of Israel. Though there is some suggestion by that 144,000 that possibly 24,000 daughters remain in Israel because she says you will not only be a light unto the Israelites as you are an Israelite yourself, you will also be a light unto the Gentiles as well. And that's the 10 tribes that got cast out there. So I, there's still some, um, you know, understanding to be had because the 10 tribes, it looks like it's 10 tribes that smashes those toes on that false image. Yet the Shulamite is seen with a double cam of 144,000. So the 10 would only be 120,000. So there is some suggestion possibly that 24,000 other daughters are still in, that, that they did go back to Israel. So there is that in our understanding that we still haven't quite fully worked out. Um, so our mothers, praise thee, is burned up with fire. Our pleasant things are laid waste. Our pleasant land, pleasant, uh, was another name for Israel. But it was known as the pleasant land that man divided into two covenants. It becomes... The, what the day of the Lord is about, the controversy of Zion, which factors in all three religions. You ain't going home based on a religious lie that split God's covenant into two women in allegory. Galatians 4, these two women are allegorical to two covenants, which then takes you why the day of the Lord takes place. It's about the controversy of Zion. It's about a case. That's why she comes into the system because finally she's taking her part. Israel is standing up for her part. And um, so and then you have the Ancient of Days coming in in uh, Daniel 7 is uh, what you see, the, the case going forth there. And finally, it is handed over to the true saints of the covenant. Um, will thou refrain, refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? Will thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? So what we learn from 64 with all of these signs, it actually takes you back to chapter 63 near the end where the presence came to make a name for herself. So it says here, you uh, look to make a name for yourself. Where does it say it? Um, the mountains might flow down. Uh, okay. To make thy name known to thine adversaries, and that the nations may tremble at thy presence. So that takes you backtrack to Isaiah 63, and it shows you it was the presence of God identified as the daughters of Zion or the daughter of Zion with her inheritance. And she came to make a name for herself. And this is all about the exodus uh, of Israel out of Egypt. And uh, the, all the signs add up to these same signs when she returns back. And so it links us to that passage in Ezra, Second Ezra. But um, it also links us to the Shulamite because it says um, uh, she's likened to um, 
horses uh, in uh, Isaiah 63 verse 13 that led them through the deep as an horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. And you get that horse, she's like a mare in Pharaoh's army in Song of Songs 1-9. So it's all linking us back to the divine feminine, which was a presence on earth, who came to make a name for herself. That's, that's what it says. Um, so I, I'm not going to read it. It's interesting. If you want to go read Isaiah 63, so she says, I'm going to call and I'm going to ask her for this presence. Yeah, so let's look at it a little bit. Um, she says, um, yeah, it says, but they rebelled and vexed her Holy Spirit. Therefore, she was turned to be their enemy and she fought against them. Then she remembered the days of old. Who? Well, the daughter Zion, who's going to actually come into our vicinity. She's the one uh, that you're going to see her wrath on earth, which is likened to the rod of iron that Proverbs 1, Wisdom says she's going to send. Then you see it embodied in her daughter, which is the strength of his rod or his branch out of Zion that you see in Psalm 10 that sits to his right hand identified as 136. So she comes. And this is what she asks when she finally enters into, pulls back, scrolls back, shows you the truth. Um, then she remembered the days of old Moses and her people saying, where is she? This is the presence that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of her flock. Where is she that put her Holy Spirit within him, within Moses? So it's this is all about the presence being here at that time and it is likened to a volcanic eruption that brought on those plagues that caused them to come out of Egypt and you can you can see the allegory in that it is a volcanic eruption and here you have it identified in 64 so she's coming and she's looking for that spirit in the earth that had placed her spirit with inside of Moses and which also got cast down so she comes, and from there she calls her out. She calls her out, and she brings her forth. And she's called the daughter of woman that is brought to the ancient of days, not son of man, daughter of woman. She's looking for her presence on earth. That's what she's looking for. So that's why it says here, and behold, the days are coming. It shall be that when I draw near to visit the inhabitants of earth, that's an inbound planetary system. And when you backtrack, it's, it's validated because of the foundations being shaken. And we know what earthquakes lead to. It leads to the volcanic eruptions, which is shown us in Isaiah 64. So I really blathered on about that. So, and I will show these signs. The books shall be opened before the firmament. So that's when the heavens scroll back and she shows you. Infants a year old shall speak with their voices. And women with children shall give birth to premature children at three and four months, and these shall live and dance. That's kind of hard to believe, but. Sown places shall suddenly appear unsown, and full storehouses shall suddenly be found to be empty. And the trumpet, is that the seventh trumpet, the mystery finally revealed by the seventh trumpet? And that mystery is that daughter Zion is the presence of God on earth, the daughters, the female, the divine feminine that was ignored that she hid her face, she didn't show herself to you. And the trumpet shall sound aloud, and when all hear it, they shall suddenly be terrified. Um, so that looks like the judgment actually cutting away in the last three and a half years. Um, at that time, friends shall make war on friends like enemies. Well, they do that today. And the earth and those who inhabit it shall be terrified, and the springs of the fountains shall stand still, so that for three hours they shall not flow. Well. I don't know what the time frame is, but we're told a day, a thousand years, is as a day unto the Lord. Uh, if we look at that in that term, three hours might possibly roughly um, uh, be about 124 years, maybe, unless I calculated it wrong, which is quite possible. Um, so, And it shall be that whoever remains after all that I have foretold to you shall herself be saved and shall see my salvation and the end of the world, or himself be saved. And they shall see the people who were taken up, who from their birth have not tasted death. 
and the heart of the earth's inhabitants shall be changed and converted to a different spirit. Well, the different spirit is finally the righteous spirit, the, the spirit of daughter Zion. Uh, for evil shall be blotted out. You get it? That different spirit isn't a wicked spirit. I've seen somebody make some stupid comment trying to say that this was an evil spirit. This is the spirit of daughter Zion, once again, finally established as the ruler of the kingdom, which he has promised to have fully restored back to her. It says the first dominion will come back to the daughter of Zion, and it is the daughter of woman brought to the ancient of days known as Wisdom, her mother, which is also the daughter of Zion in the heavens. It's difficult to get, but yet it's not. It's Israel. These are all names for Israel. And it's her, and she sends her daughter as her presence, which is the Holy Spirit upon the earth, or her Holy One. And man cast her down, didn't want her in covenant. So at the end here, uh, the earth's inhabitant shall be changed and converted to a different spirit. The spirit of daughter Zion, the one that they were supposed to be converted to. They were supposed to be hearkening to the spirit of her covenant and her laws. The evil shall be blotted out and deceit shall be quenched. Faithfulness, not blind faith. Blind faith won't save you. It will put you in a ditch and in a cistern which is likened to a grave. That's what it'll do. Faithfulness to my laws shall flourish. And corruption shall finally be overcome. And the truth, which has been so long without fruit, without children, shall finally be revealed. While she spoke to me, behold, little by little, the place where I was standing began to rock to and fro. A sign of her coming in. Um, and she said to me, I have come to show you these things this night. So this is uh, one of the angels, which is identified as the presence standing. Uh, if therefore you will pray again, fast again for seven days, I will again declare to you greater things than these. Because your voice has surely been heard before the Most High. For the Mighty One has seen your uprightness and has also observed the purity which you have maintained from your youth. Therefore, she sent me to show you all these things and to say to you, believe and do not be afraid. Do not be quick to think vain thoughts. Well, that's what took over, vanity, vain. The vain thoughts of man, men wanting to exalt themselves as God. And they couldn't stop at one he. In order to really yoke you good girls, they had to make a triple male to do that. Wow, that ought to speak volumes to you because it doesn't make any sense. But it don't. <laughs> They're brainwashing. You know, they claim they can brainwash you into something in less than two months. And then they can go back right behind that and tell you the full truth and you'll argue with them that it's a lie. <laughs> wow, and you, you, you've been subject to that um, for thousands of years now. Do not be quick to think vain thoughts concerning the former times, lest you be hasty concerning the last times. So don't think you know how it went down, because you don't, unless you've actually gone in and studied with the Holy Spirit to lead you. Now after this I wept again and fasted seven days as before in order to complete the three weeks as I had been told. And on the eighth night my heart was troubled within me again. I began to speak in the presence of the Most High. So her presence upon the earth, the one that hid her face from you. For my spirit was greatly uh, aroused or awakened, and my soul was in great distress. I said, O oh Lord, thou didst speak at the beginning of creation, and didst say on the first day, Let heaven and earth be made, and thy word accomplish the work. And then the spirit was hovering in darkness, and silence embraced everything. The sound of man's voice was not yet there. Then thou didst command that a ray of light be brought forth from thy treasures, so that the work might then appear. Again on the second day thou didst create the spirit of the firmament, and didst command her to divide and separate the waters, that one part might move upward and the other part remain beneath. On the third day thou didst command the waters to be gathered together in the seventh part of the earth, six parts thou didst dry up and keep that some of them might be planted and cultivated and be of service before thee. For thy word went forth, and at once the work was done. All right. Um, so 
so we go on about the creation. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to skim through this because it's taking me a long time. So where are we going to pick up? So then God created behemoth, the Leviathan. Um, so we know that God created that double edged sword from the very beginning, because that's what that kind of represents behemoth. Uh, is an allegory to this behemoth nation that Israel is shown laid out as in uh, Numbers 2 that Balaam was absolutely terrified of. And uh, Leviathan is allegorical to the dragon system that uh, we're shown actually Egypt began to muddy those waters uh, really bad in uh, Ezekiel 32 it, it blames Egypt it says you you muddy my waters really bad and so I think it's showing you how this lie followed the Egypt the Israelites out of Egypt and it actually began to rule them when they came into their own land and we've shown that over time uh, how they actually developed uh, this religious lie and shifted it over to the worship of the God that we have now. So, um, so where are we going? Hmm. Okay, so we'll start at verse 56 of chapter 6. As for the other nations which have descended from, it's got Adam? No, Israel. It was woman that all descended from. A man, an XY, don't possess the genetic encoding to give life to females. XX chromosomes have 33% more genetic material than a Y. So an XY can't cut out an XX story. If anything, that's why you have this word, and I got thinking about this last night. The men hate this when I say stuff like this. And many of the women do, because they won't take their own part. Right? Woman. Look at that. What comes out of woman? What comes out of that word? Man. Man. What comes out of man? <laughs> man. That's what comes out of man. Woman, she can create woman and man. She possesses the exact which is 33% more genetic material than any male carries on planet Earth. And it says the tabernacle below yeah, reflects the one above. And then they tell us that our tabernacle, which is the temple that you dwell in, your body, don't exist in the heavens. So they're saying that he's made in his father's image, which is an XY, and then he gave life to an XX. That's what they're trying to claim. It doesn't make sense. It just simply don't make sense. They do not possess the genetic material. And the thing is, the junk DNA that they call it, which is these 10 strands, is going to highly, in my opinion, from just understanding all the allegory, going to highly favor women. I get a kick out of the Mutants series, the X-Men series, because it's always the males that are more potent with their power that they come up with. Well, surely a woman with 33% more genetic material would be your most powerful. Yeah, just foolishness, I know. But what they reason out and throw at you every day, you don't even think about. You just receive it. God says reason. Reason things out. Open your eyeballs and start to reason them out. And the way they train our athletes, I'm sorry, you can't train a female the way you train a male. And they'll say, oh, you got to be careful that you don't rupture your womb and all that. I, that's the most powerful muscle in the body. <laughs> um, I'm thinking there's more to it than what we've been taught. We've had so much information removed from us, especially as women, to place you in the home with a broom in your hand and to have babies. Uh, there's something missing. Seriously. So, yeah, that's just foolish talk. Yeah, for now, it's just foolish talk. So she comes in. And then we're going to find out the real truth of it all. So, where was we? 
Okay. And for the other nations which have descended from Israel, thou hast said that they are nothing, and that they are like spittle, and thou hast compared their abundance to a drop from a bucket. And now, O Lord, that's 136, behold those nations which are reputed as nothing, domineer over us and devour us. So we know it is Israel, not Adam. It is Israel speaking there. It doesn't make sense to say Adam. And now they rule over us. We gave birth to them. Israel, the daughters of Israel, gave birth to the nations. And then those nations turned on her. And those nations are allegorical to the Adamic nations. That's right. They become known as the Adamic nations because they turn on her and her laws. Then they surround her, the woman's seed, and take her route, try to take her route too, is what they do. Because he rejected her law. And we're told in Jeremiah 6 why the stronghold of daughter Zion was gave to man. It was to try his ways upon the earth. So, and now, O Lord, behold, these nations which are reputed as nothing domineer over us and devour us. And that's what they did to Israel, the woman's seed. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn and only begotten. That's Israel. Ephraim, Israel, female, the daughter is the firstborn. That's why she's the last thing created. She was the beginning and she's also the end. Zealous for thee and most dear have been given into their hands. If the world has indeed been created for us, for the daughters, she came to make a name for herself. Why do we not possess our world as an inheritance? And we don't. We daughters don't possess it. It's the fallen sons that possess it. That's who possesses it. Not the ones who it really truly belong to. And that's why you see her, and it is her, and want to put it to him, in Zechariah 11. Let me see here if I can get to it. Zechariah 11. We've looked at this in other videos. So that, you know, people might watch my video. Well, she didn't answer this, she didn't answer that. I answered a lot of questions if you want to go in and find the answers to them because they're in my videos. But most don't want to watch me because I'm not walking the walk and talking the talk. I'm, uh, I'm in a personal relationship with my God. <clears throat> and that's all I care about. This is, uh, what's it? Uh, uh, one with God is a majority. I'm a majority. That's what I am. Because I'm with God. I'm not with man-made laws. So what does it say in Zechariah 11, 10, uh, 7? We'll start at 7. And I will feed the flock of slaughter. Yep. Even you, O poor of the flock, and I took unto me two staves, the one I called beauty. The name on that is Noam. They say, we reckon this to be a male name. Well, from my understanding, and forgive me for saying this, this is my name, it's Naomi. That's right, it means pleasant. That's what the pleasant, that's what the land of Israel is called, pleasant, which is also the meaning of Naomi, which is also in the Bible, in the book of Ruth. So she put her name on it, representing the Holy One upon the earth. Then she takes the other one and calls it bands. That's her inheritance. That's her inheritance that held her spirit. And they were all women. It's a village of women that you see identified in Psalm 68. And no, it's not me. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that that's the name when you reason out the divine feminine that was on that stave. That's why Naomi says, call me not Naomi, call me Mara. Because it links you right back to this passage where the Holy One of Israel was instructed to take this staff, to write her name on it, and then to break it in front of the people. Then she becomes known as bitter, right? And that links you to those laws of bitter waters, right? Go read Numbers 11. Is it 11 or 5? I always get those two chapters mixed up. Is it 11 or 5? And they speak of the law of bitter waters. Yeah, because God's so fair. If a man just suspected 
He didn't have to have no witnesses. He didn't have to have no proof that his wife might be cheating on him. He would bring her to the high priest. And you know what? Basically, I believe was going on then. He would hire the priest to poison her and humiliate her in the village. That's what he was doing. These laws did not come from God. This was appointed. These laws became appointed when they cast off a covenant with her, right? And began to exalt themselves and their own laws. That's Torah. Yep, that's in the Old Testament. That's one of the Torah laws. Yep, that's right. No, it ain't. That didn't come from God. They wrote it in there. It made them happy. It tickled their little ears. So she's told to write her name on one of the staff and bands, Hebelim, and that's her inheritance. For what portion of God is there from above? The inheritance of the Almighty from on high. So this is her personal inheritance. And so she writes their name, my inheritance, on the other staff. That's what she does. Three shepherds also I cut off. So she got pretty fed up with the shepherds that she had to deal with. Or even it could be the shepherdesses that she had to deal with. Because at this time they may have been siding with the men, with the priests, the high priests. Not sure yet. Um, but I do tend to believe it may be shepherd. I'm going to go with that one. Because she says I handed them over to shepherds. Um, so... And I, I cut off in one month. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. Well, yeah, if we understand the foreskin being cut away. So these looks like shepherds that were in covenant with the harlot spirit so they could exalt themselves. What they were doing, they were exalting men in the flock. That's what they were doing. So I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them. And that's that Lord that awakens at the end, identified as 136, she awakens and she is angered by the image that she sees standing. The image that that Lord 136 sees standing is male there. You go look the word image up, it's a male idol. It's going to take you right back to Daniel chapter 2. That image standing, right? And so she says, I love them in their soul also aboard me. They hated me. She says, they hated me without a cause. And they shot at me with their arrows, with their words, with their wicked ways to take me out of the land. And they gnashed upon me with their teeth to re remove the spirit of my covenant out of the land. Israel, the daughters of Israel is what they didn't want. So then said I, I will not feed you. That that dieth, let it die. I'm done with you. I will no longer be in covenant with you to save your life. Now you can die. That's what you want. You want the hard lessons. We're going to give them to you. And we're going to let you be for a few thousand years and see if you can learn a hard lesson. Let's see if you can do it. You won't learn it my way. I can't teach it to you. You'll have to learn it by hopefully opening your eyes and seeing what your lies has caused to happen to the citizens of this world. So, and I took my staff, okay, uh, I will not feed you, that that dieth, let it die. And that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. So that's the tearing down, the gnashing with the teeth. And I took my staff, even beauty, Naomi. That would be the female name on it. Forgive me once again. I don't mean myself. All right? I link it back to Naomi when she says, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. Call me bitter. And cut it asunder that I might break my covenant of peace, of love, of eternal life, of fair treatment to the daughters, not a preference to the males, which I had made with all the people, and it was broken in that day. And so the poor, the women, I think the poor of the flock is probably her personal inheritance here. The poor of the flock who actually hearkened to the spirit of the covenant. 
So she says, and it was broken in that day, and so the poor of the flock that waited upon me, her personal inheritance, knew that it was the word of the Lord, knew that it was going to happen. And um, I, I think this brought so much fear in their hearts because they were being cast off. Great violence were being perpetuated against these women and still is in the earth and is permitted under man-made law and not most time is swept under the rug, <coughs> hid. They don't want you to see just how much of it is going on. And uh, But it's so overt at the same time, they're almost snickering at us, smirking, laughing, mocking at us because we ain't been able to reason out what is fair to God. And it certainly ain't this. So, and the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter. All right, so, and I said, if you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. So this is where God promises, I'll make your, your glory, your mantle, even greater. Because she's selling her mantle here, is basically your understanding. And the mantle is the outer garment, your robe, that represented the glory of the women. And you would see these women in Micah 2. It was women with their robes, and they would pass through the gateway of David to the rightful birthright from the house in the force of Lebanon where they had met with Mother Wisdom from above. And they would give the laws. And so you see in Micah 2, they were as men at war, and they were ripping these mantles off of these daughters is what was going on once you get your truth. Oh, I know. It's not true. He, he, he gives life, and it's a father with his children. <laughs> Frig the mother. No such thing as her. <laughs> you don't exist. I just don't know why we are here. Um, yeah, I do. Just to keep you on the straight and narrow. And uh, we fell from that path. Um, so she was gave 30 pieces of silver, and the Lord sent it. Cast it to the potter. The potter. The creator. The one who shapes life in the wind, the mother. A goodly price that I was prized at. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house. Then I cut asunder my other staff, even bands. So she cuts off her inheritance and says, no more will you hearken to my spirit. You're going to be cast out into the lands of the Gentiles. They're casting you off now. She does give them fair warning in Micah 2. And she says, leave. This is not your rest. Get out of here while you can. Because they're going to come after you. They're going to murder you. They're going to sell you. They're going to do whatever they can to you. So get out of the land while you can. And a good many, I believe, did leave. And that's why you end up with ten tribes out in the lands of the Gentiles. And they're still there today. Um, that I make, Then I cut asunder my other staff, even bands that I might break. The sisterhood, it wasn't the brotherhood. The sisterhood between, between Judah and Israel. So she breaks it uh, with her bands. Her personal inheritance is what she does. And, uh, and the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. So this takes us to the wicked devices of their hearts that they were dreaming of in Jeremiah 23. They take wicked counsel against them. The men do against this nation. Let us cut her off from being a nation. In Psalm 83, they don't want her law. Let us cut her bands asunder. The kings of the earth says in Psalm 2. So it was all against cutting off the divine feminine and her law. They did not want to hearken to her law. That's what you're understanding. Um, so for law, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that will be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. Now, I'm going to liken that to some degree back to King Solomon. That was the shepherd that got raised up, according to the Bible. And he daubed up the gates. And he prevented the righteous key of David from her birthright. And installed a harlot's beard and changed the flock in the midst, called Basra, from the righteous spirit that would teach the laws of heaven that would keep you alive to a harlot spirit that would build him up as God and king on the earth. And uh, we get that allegory in Tyre, the king of Tyre, which we'll look at in the next video. 
So woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. Mm. The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Now I got notes on that somewhere. So I'm not going to look at that right now. But that was interesting. Right? So there we see, and it's not male. It's not male. It's female. It's the Holy Spirit, the Holy One of Israel, that broke her covenant and said, fine, you don't want me. You won't have me. So, again, it takes us back to she believed, I believe over time, that time was going to teach them the hard lessons that they did not want to learn at that time. You're going to die. And you're going to be under severe violence. There's going to be severe bloodshed. And um, there's going to be a lot of violence towards women. And boy, has it. The women have suffered a great deal. Uh, and the men die and continue on continue on their way. So she says, if they don't turn back, I'm going to restring my covenant, my bow. And she says that in Psalm 7. And that's akin to her returning back into our atmosphere. Uh, you know, we're going to see... I think her and her throne, that planet, established there. And uh, she says, I'm going to restring my bow. And that's why men's hearts are going to fail them. And I think that's going to link to the, the three and a half year mark, right? So where was I? So the trumpet was sounding at the, seven, at the seventh trumpet, right? Which is akin to the three and a half year mark. Um, the mystery is revealed. The mystery is that daughter Zion is the spirit of your covenant that you cast down and didn't want. So, um, so if the world has indeed been created for us, why do we not possess our world as an inheritance, right? How long will this be so? So we just read Zechariah 10 for that. So chapter 7. When I had finished speaking these words, the angel had, who had been sent to me on the former nights was sent to me again. And she said to me, Rise, Ezra, and listen to the words that I have come to speak. Okay. I said, Speak, my lord. And she said to me, There is a sea set in a wide expanse, so that it is broad and vast. But it has an interest set in a narrow place, so that it is like a river. So that's your straight path, right? Um, it's the vine that flows like a river in the daughters. Yeah. It, it, and that's mother. So I wonder if it ain't the water in our blood that's identifying us in, in some manner uh, to the Almighty above. She knows us. We're marked in some way. And, it, of course, it's by what we're teaching, the spirit of the covenant. But it seems to go deeper than that because it's as if the root is holy. The branches are also holy. So it's like they're exactly from that tree and don't even know it. And yet it's, it's water that's defining us, so we know the blood is made up of 92% water. So I wonder if somehow that water isn't actually identifying us in some way. I know it sounds silly, but there's so many things that we don't know, that we don't understand. Um, so if anyone then wishes to reach the sea and to look at it, so the sea is allegorical to outer space, in a way, I think, um, to look at it or to navigate it, how can she come to the broad part unless she passes through the narrow part? So in order to reach the heavens and to be able to be a part of that world again, the heavenlies, we must first navigate the narrow path. And the narrow path is the path that we got off of. And the narrow path is the righteous laws of heaven. And when we departed from those righteous laws of heaven as found at the daughter's mouth, Israel's mouth, the daughter's, the female, and started to hearken to the religious lies and laws of violence created by man by exalting the heart of the spirit that would exalt him as God on the earth, we left the narrow path. And we were no longer welcomed in the heavens. But she has promised um, her, her case will be heard. Once she reestablishes who she is, she begins to teach her children. Uh, the ancient of days enters again. And we're going to see it. 
We're going to see it. We're not going to be able to deny it. And the daughter of woman, Israel herself, is brought to mother. And it says the dominion is gave back to her, not to the son of man. It's daughter of woman that it's gave back to the firstborn who was cast down and denied. Um, so another example, there is a city built and set on a plain, and it is full of all good things. So there we have that plain. Now what that plain actually links us to the city that was placed there was Zion. So I wonder if that don't take us back to the last video where they placed that false image, a gold statue that Nebuchadnezzar made in the plain of Dora. It was a plain, right? Um, so, and it all links back to the dimensions of six and six and six, 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 and that gold came down to Solomon as six, 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 which then he goes about establishing the beast system that he exalts a harlot in his heart so he can exalt himself and bring violence into the world, blood into the law, which is then saw as the admixture of doctrine in your Red Sea that the spirit of Moses had to part in order to get the children home. So you're seeing all your allegory, whether you realize it or not. And I know I read briefly somewhere, and I can't find it now, but I'm sure I read it somewhere, that there was a group of men, and I believe it said they were Jewish men, who called or would call for a literal interpretation of the scriptures and not allegorical. Well, gee, I wonder why. And you know what? That fed out because from the time I went to the gathering that I went to as this, the last gathering that I would attend, they would always preach, interpret the scriptures literal, never interpret them allegorical. They would hearken at that. They would preach at that hard. And you want to know why? Because the truth is found in allegory. That's why they demanded it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they demanded it. So, but the entrance to it is narrow and set in a precipitous place, a high place. So you have to climb. The she-goat is known as a great climber, the greatest climber of all. And so we got this precipitous place, which is also where the he-goats climb to and where they're going to be cast down from. And uh, we're told that in Deuteronomy 32, in due time their foot will slip. Uh, she says, in due time, their foot's going to slip. And she says, I declare by myself that I live forever. That's a holy one upon earth. Um, and then you get it in um, Psalm 141, uh, where she says, um, she speaks of the high places, and they'll be cast down, I think. So, so there we see the precipitous place, so that there is a fire on the right hand and deep water on the left. And there is only one path lying between them. That's the birthing canal. Only she can birth you out. And that birthing canal is operating as a gateway, which is held by the Shulamite in Song of Songs. And she says, who shall ascend into my holy hill? Actually, he says it, but it's she saying it. Who's going to ascend when that planet comes in? Who's going to defend you? So she says, who shall ascend into my holy hill? And then she tells you who. She with clean hands and a pure heart. Says he. The only one I could find in scripture that had clean hands and a pure heart was the Shulamite. And when she gets up to open the gate for him, because he comes for her to collect her. Poor mother. That's what he comes for. She's the one that has to open the gate. And her fingers drips with myrrh. She's the only one I can find with clean hands. I can't find a man with clean hands. All I can find is the Shulamite, and it specifies that her fingers drips with myrrh. And she gets up, and he knocks at the gate. He can't come in. He can't come in. But she can open the gate. And she's asleep. She says, my, my heart, what does she say? I'm asleep, but my heart is awake. So the spirit's awake. So she awakens at the end, and she does open the gate eventually. But that's akin to the birthing canal and taking her children out. But first she goes first. And she's identified as the bride, Israel. And so um, she, with clean hands and a pure heart. So then it takes you to Song of Songs 
She is the choice one of her mother, the pure one. She with clean hands and a pure heart. She's pure because she's not teaching a lie. She's not teaching uh, a religious lie that's going to blacken her in the spirit. All right? And so she's the choice one. She's the one that's called forth. The son looks like comes and gathers her, takes her, takes her out when she opens the gate, when he calls. That planetary system comes into view. She'll speak to one and one alone. And that is the daughter of woman. That's who she'll speak to. That's who she'll hear from. And she is shown being brought to her as the ancient of days. That's who that is. Wisdom, her mother, who she's cut from. She's a copy. She's also daughter Zion. Right? She goes by many names. And she's brought to her. And there, from there, she defends mankind, womankind. Because when she can defend herself and she says, I got the law. I can teach it to them. I'll bring them around. And those that won't will cut them away. The dominion is restored back to her. But she's got to stand up. If she don't stand up, then she's never going to be called. And it's about the controversy of Zion. And she must defend herself. She says, I must restore back what I did not take away. And then in Isaiah 22, it speaks of a burden being cut off of her. Well, the burden that is cut away is symbolic of the foreskin, those that won't receive the spirit of her covenant. So that's akin to the last three and a half years, that cutting away of the foreskin. They won't receive my law. There's nothing else I can do. There's nothing else I can do. So you see in it all, it's all shown to us, but we have to be able to put it together. All right, so wow, am I way behind. So, um, where was I? Sorry. So you, we got to navigate the narrow path. Um, and there is only one path lying between them, that is between fire and water, so that only one woman, not one man, it's the woman, the daughter of woman, Israel, so that only one woman can walk upon that path. If now that city is given to a woman for an inheritance, it was her personal inheritance, how will the heir receive her inheritance unless she passes through the danger set before her? So that means navigating these, this admixture of doctrine. Uh, that Red Sea, um, that you got a part. And so she has to navigate through the danger that's set before her. And it's akin to earth. Navigating the waters, it, you know, it's almost like Earth is a ship navigating the passages to get us home, in a sense. Um, so if now that city is given, okay, I said she cannot, Lord, and he's saying she cannot pass through the danger. So she cannot, Lord, and she said, to, so also is Israel's portion. She cannot. At this time, that's what God's saying. For I made the world for their sake. And when Adam, and it does say Adam, transgressed my laws, my statutes, what had been made had been judged, was judged. So we've been under judgment, is what this is actually telling us, because she left. And she says, and that's akin to her breaking her covenant with them. The spirit would no longer be upon them. She says, fine, if planet Earth don't want to adhere to my laws, which will allow them to navigate into the heavens, then we'll set them aside for now. So there was a time frame gave because it is idea of a court case. It does take us to Psalm 50 where she says, I remain silent. So until she begins to speak, until the Ancient of Days hears her speaking her covenant again, she doesn't arrive. So we go to uh, Psalm 50, and you'll see her begin to speak, and it's she, and she's speaking to defend herself, because she says, they accuse me of things I know nothing of, so she went silent, and women did go silent, and she says, long time have I holden my peace, I have been still, I have restrained myself in Isaiah 42, now will I go forth like a travailing woman, I'm going to gather my children. And those that will hearken to the spirit of my covenant is what she's saying. So in Psalm 50, she says this. So. 
Um, thou sittest and speakest against thy, now I've changed this, thy sister, and thou slanderest thine own mother's daughter. And he did. Adam slandered his sister, Eve, in the garden. He points, he accuses. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Long time have I holden my peace. Um, thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. You thought I was just like you. That's what they teach. Woman and man really was one. Really? I tabernacle in a much different body. I'm not a man. I'm a woman. And as such, I represent something very different in the covenant. And it was the spirit that I represent. Therefore, it meant I was to teach man the right way. And the laws that we are upholding today goes against God's covenant, Mother's covenant. So she says, I was altogether such as one as thyself. That's what you thought. But I will reprove you, Adam. I'm going to reprove you now. And I'm going to set them in order before your eyes. And that's the koaleth, the female assembler called preacher in Ecclesiastics chapter, what is it, 9? She says, now I'm going to set the Proverbs in order. And I'm going to tell you how it all really played out. And that's akin to mother saying, who can tell me what happened from the beginning to the end, from generation to generation? And she is actually addressing the spirit that placed her spirit upon Moses in the desert and the daughter of Zion who got cast down. She's actually speaking to her, the daughter of woman. That's who she's speaking to. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. So that takes you back to Micah, takes you to Micah. And these lions that lies amongst the people, the Gentiles, they'll rise up like a lion, it says, lionesses. And it says, none will be able to save from them. So when the, the kingdom is gave back over to them as their personal inheritance, then they have every right to go forth and cut away in the last three and a half years those that won't receive the spirit of the covenant. Because the mystery gets revealed at the three and a half year mark, according to what I'm understanding in the book of Revelation, when that seventh trumpet finally sounds, right? And when the seventh trumpet finally sounds, it's akin to that judgment finally being laid. And she says, fine, uh, you've proven yourself to be innocent in this matter, and I'm going to hand uh, your inheritance back over to, for you to, to finish dealing with. And those that will receive the spirit of your covenant will enter into the new covenant with you and those that will not and refuse you you have the right to cut them away they can have the spirit of the covenant blood if that's what they truly want and you see that it says daughter zion will thresh the nations and that's all wrapped up in the last three and a half year mark from what i can understand my phone's ringing Just making sure there's no messes. Okay. So, where are we? Okay, so also is Israel's portion. For I made the world for their sake, and when Adam transgressed my statutes, what had been made was judged. And so the entrance of this world were made narrow, and sorrowful, and toilsome. There are few and evil, full of dangers and involved in great hardships. But the entrances of the greater world are broad and safe and really yield the fruit of immortality. Therefore, unless a living pass through the difficult and vain experiences, see? See, Ezra wanted to get through his time right quick. He wanted to make haste and say, have the judgment over with. But she's telling you right here what the purpose of our time on earth was for. Therefore, unless the living pass through the difficult and the vain experiences, they can never receive those things that have been reserved for them. So from this life that we live, we are to understand the truth of God's covenant. That's the purpose of our life and our existence. But now why are you disturbed, seeing that you are to perish? And why are you moved, seeing that you are mortal? And why have you not considered in your mind what is to come rather than what is now present? Then I answered and said, O sovereign Lord, behold, thou hast ordained in thy law that the righteous shall inherit these things, but that the ungodly shall perish. The righteous, therefore, can endure difficult circumstances while hoping for easier ones. But those who have done wickedly have suffered the difficult circumstances and will not see the easier ones. And she said to me, You are not a better judge than God. She don't like what he's saying here. Or wiser than the Most High. So don't think you know what's going on. 
let many perish who are now living rather than the law of God. So she's saying, you're defending them. That's what you're doing. And I'm defending God's law is what I'm doing. If you can't live in God's laws and walk in her statutes, then you have no right to a good life. That's what God's saying. That's why I gave you my law. And that is the purpose of my law and what I'm doing here. So that I can bring you into the fullness of my blessings. But Ezra is proposing that he knows more than God. And she's saying, you ain't got a clue what you're talking about. Because you don't understand the things that have happened to your own planet. You can't even reason it out. So don't pretend to know about what's going on up here. Or how I work or why I do the things I do. You don't. Um, for God strictly commanded those who come into the world when they came, what they should do to live and what they should observe to avoid punishment. And she did. She sent the law through the daughters of Zion. They didn't want it. Nevertheless, they were not obedient and they spoke against her. They devised for themselves vain thoughts. We go back to Baal in his vain thinking. Baal is another word for your husband who wants to rule over you with his wicked laws. And perpetuate violence against you so he can yoke you under them and steal your riches from you. So she's telling you they devised for themselves vain thoughts when they cast off my righteous daughters and laws. And proposed to themselves wicked frauds. They even declared that the Most High does not exist and they ignored her ways. Yeah, uh, not his. It's her. They say she don't exist. The Most High does not exist. What does that mean? Oh, we have a most high. It's the gender. We got a he, he, he. You say, I don't exist. And you cast off my daughters, the image of me and my covenant. And I hid my face from you, your mother, who could give life to you. And you didn't want me in covenant. You didn't want my daughters in covenant. So they scorned her law and denied her covenants. They have been unfaithful to her statutes, and they have not performed her works. Therefore, Ezra, empty things are for the empty, and full things are for the full. Those who will receive it, it's, it's for them. Those who won't receive it, I'm going to cut you away, snip, snip, the foreskin. And shameful spewing will come upon your foreskin. For behold, the time will come when the signs which I have foretold to you will come to pass. That the city which now is not seen shall appear, and the land which now is hidden shall be disclosed. Well, the land and the city is encompassed in these daughters of Zion, which is your scepter, your ruler, your Shiloh, between the feet of Judah that was cast out in the lands of the Gentiles. That's where that city, that land is. Um, and everyone who has been delivered from the evils that I have foretold shall see my wonders my daughters these are women to be greatly wondered at and from thence shall come your branch she's talking to joshua the branch the daughter your wife one of these many are called few are chosen so for my daughter um, shall be revealed with those who are with her and those who remain shall rejoice it says for 400 years well now they're trying uh, again i think it may be corrupted text because they're trying to link it back to this here. And after these years, my daughter Zion shall die, and all who draw human breath, and the world shall be turned back to prim primeval silence for seven days. So that may have been just what's played out. The whole thing uh, that's played out is the last 7,000 years. And it was at the, begin at the first beginning, so that no one shall be left. And after seven days... The world which is not yet awake shall be awakened, and that which is corruptible shall perish. So we are at the end here. So this is this passage here took us to what played out. And the earth shall give up those who are asleep in it, and the dust those who dwell silently in it, and the chambers shall give up the souls which have been committed to them. Um, and the Most High shall be revealed upon the seat of judgment. And compassion shall pass away, and patience shall be withdrawn. That's the three and a half year uh, judgment of the daughters of Zion. Uh, patience is going to be gone. It's going to be withdrawn. Compassion is going to be took away. Um, it says, my indignation will go forth. And that 
her patience and her compassion has to leave in order to cut away the foreskin, those that won't receive the spirit of her covenant. And so she, she, she gives them the fulfilling of their covenant, the covenant of blood, death. That's what you want. That's what you want to wash in. That's what you want to drink. You'll have it. Um, but only judgment shall remain. Truth shall stand and faithfulness shall finally grow strong. And so it's about your faithfulness to my laws. That's what saves, not blind faith in the blood of a man. That's the covenant that brings your death on. It's the water of the law that washes you clean. And recompense shall follow, and the reward shall be manifested. Righteous deeds shall awake, and unrighteous deeds shall not sleep. Then the pit of torment shall appear, and opposite shall be the place of rest, and the furnace of hell shall be disclosed, and opposite the paradise of delight. Then the Most High will say to the nations that have been raised from the dead, Look now, and understand whom you have denied, and whom you have not served, and whose commandments you have despised. It wasn't his, it was hers. Yeah, hers. She, our mother from above, our mother wisdom, our mother Israel, you despised her from the beginning. You never claimed to have a mother, and you didn't. That's why you die, because father don't give life. Look on this side and on that. Here are delight and rest, and there are fire and torments. Thus will I speak, will she speak, to them on the day of judgment. That's the Ancient of Days, sitting. So that takes you to Daniel, uh, I think it's chapter 7, maybe chapter 6 or 8, but I think it's 7. A day that has no sun or moon or stars. So when she enters in for judgment, the sun and the moon are going to be darkened. So we may not see it. But that's the volcanic eruptions going off as well. Right? Um, so, or cloud or thunder or lightning or wind or water or air or darkness or evening or morning or summer or spring or heat or winter or frost or cold or hail or rain or dew or noon or night or dawn or shining or brightness of light but only the splendor of the glory of the Most High. Okay, so maybe we will see it, by which all shall see what has been determined for them. So that may be the red sun, S-U-N, because she tells Zion, Isaiah 54, I will make your pinnacles of ruby. And when you go look the word pinnacles up in Isaiah 54, or your battlements of ruby, your protector, your defender, battlement, it's sun. It's a, it's a sun of ruby. So it's saying a red sun, for it will last for about a week of years, a week of years. This is my judgment in its prescribed order, and to you alone have I shown these things. I answered and said, O Sovereign Lord, I said then and I say now, blessed are those who are alive and keep thy commandments. But what of those for whom I prayed? For who among the living is there that has not sinned, or who among men ha that has not transgressed thy covenant? And now I see that the world to come will bring delight to few, but torment to many. You know, my video is getting long. I'm sorry. I really did not want to do this. I had hoped I could bolt through this. But I'm going to have to be leaving, folks. Wow. I, I just, I got to go. It's getting too long, the video. So, but we have all transgressed the covenant. I'm sorry. I do have to leave. And now I see that the world to come will bring delights to few, but torments to many. So that's the world, The last, I think that's the last three and a half years of their covenant, of the cutting away. Um, yeah, for an evil heart has grown up in us, which has alienated us from God, and has brought us into corruption and the ways of death, and has shown us the path of perdition, and removed us far from life, and that not just a few of us, but almost all who have been created. So, I'm going to leave it there. I'm sorry. I am going to have to make another video. This is getting long, but I, I do have to be leaving. And, um, it's just fun to read it, and to study it, and to look at it, and to piece it together with the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Bible. And you can. Uh, corruption aside, you can. Alright? And, um, so... I thank any for watching the video. I appreciate um, you coming along on these studies. I do hope to wrap up soon. I really do. I, I'm sorry I keep dragging this out. I don't mean to. Um, and I thank you for watching my videos. Pray the Lord blesses you with an abundance of truth. And I hope you all have 
a really nice day. Thanks for watching.